Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here, WilhiteWX.com. Got a lot to cover tonight. We've got a strong, severe weather threat. The chances are looking pretty doggone good. Uh, the threat is actually looking to increase tomorrow, so I want to deal with that as quickly as we can here tonight. First off, 7.45 Central Time as I'm recording this video. We've got some uh, rain activity already starting to form here uh, across the area. This is going to fill in as we head into the overnight hours, and then, but uh, the main event will come tomorrow. Uh, for tonight, just a marginal risk for some severe weather. I wouldn't be surprised if we have uh, some gusty winds out of this to 40 miles an hour or so, uh, some lightning and possibly some hail and some of the stronger uh, storms with this. But overall, not going to be uh, uh, too bad. You do see that there, you know, there are some stronger, uh, heavier downpours starting to show up into this. And uh, but, but again, this is not the main event. Now, we are underneath of a wind advisory for a good chunk of the area tomorrow. Uh, winds are, are going to be gusty out there, 30 miles uh, plus miles per hour at time sustained. So, uh, and then, of course, higher gusts than that. So uh, hold on to your hats out there tomorrow. But, I mean, just look at how potent this system is. So we're under our wind advisory here tomorrow as well. And, by the way, I would almost guarantee we're going to go underneath of a tornado watch at some point in time tomorrow would be my guess. Severe thunderstorm watch, uh, definite, uh, but I, I would, uh, at the minimum, but I suspect we're probably going to go underneath of a tornado watch out of this uh, across the area. I can just about bet that's going to happen. But look at this, just up to our north, winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings up here around the, you know, the, the northern portion of the Ohio Valley here. Uh, just uh, the Midwest, just really northern system uh, portion of this just getting hammered with some stuff. And that tells you just something about this cold front. This is a very... A dynamic, very powerful cold front that's going to be swinging through. If we, through. If we just take a look at temperatures here, temperatures are actually going to be the opposite. And uh, you know, normally it cools overnight. Temperatures are actually going to warm up during the overnight hours. And so, you know, we start here with temperatures in the upper 40s right now. But watch this. Uh, by the time you go into the overnight hours, you get to about 1 a.m. You're warming into the 50s along the Ohio River. And as you wake up tomorrow morning, we're already into the 60s with that warm front lifting northward there. Uh, in fact, tomorrow going to be a very strong day. Some of us could make it to the mid 70s. If we get any sunshine at all, I wouldn't be surprised for these numbers to even be uh, a little bit higher. Could someone hit close to 80 around here? I think if there's some sunshine, there's a real possibility with this. So it's going to be a very strong, strong heating day. But just look at how powerful of a cold front this is. We're talking 30s up here, 70s. Uh, down here and you can just see literally as that cold front plows through the area uh, you know just in this at, at this particular point in time tomorrow night uh, about this time by about you know seven eight o'clock tomorrow night Owensboro could be at 69 and Evansville at 52 and then St. Louis back already in the low 40s getting close to the 30s so you get an idea this is going to be a very powerful cold front and by the time you wake up Wednesday morning then you're already near near or below freezing across the area and Thursday just doesn't recover much as you know Wednesday doesn't recover much rather we you know we, we may get into the 40s for high so this is a very powerful cold front and that's why Storm Prediction Center has already outlined a risk area here uh, we are now underneath of an enhanced risk for pretty much all of southern Indiana you can see the towns that are included basically from I-70 on south in the state you're in underneath of an enhanced risk all of western Kentucky included into this if I switch over to Kentucky you can kind of see the cities that are included there as well. If you want to do a little bit more, you can sort of just pause the video and go back and take a look at that. But uh, very, uh, very powerful system coming in tomorrow, and it could be a pretty bad day. Let me give you the uh, future radars just to kind of give you an idea. I want, to, I want to show you the radar that was initialized this morning. And then this afternoon's run just really quickly to give you an idea of what's going to go on. Here's the showers that start to develop and some of those heavier downpours tonight. That'll turn into a very heavy rain setup. And again, there's a possibility that we could end up with some uh, <clears throat> uh, heavier thunderstorms, frequent lightning with these tonight uh, in some of these stronger cells. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, a lot of that is already lifting off to our north. And as you can see, uh, there's a line starting to form uh, way out to our west during the afternoon hour. So this would be about 1 o'clock Eastern. Uh, by this time, there is a possibility that we could have some cells already developing out here. I'm skeptical of that because there's going to be a very strong, what we call a capping inversion. It's sort of like a cap is a sort of a lid on the atmosphere. It's a temperature inversion. Uh, temperatures normally get colder as you go up in the atmosphere, but a temperature inversion means you get warmer as you go up in certain layers of the atmosphere. And so that sort of prevents storms from, uh, 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 you know, from growing. We're going to have a pretty strong uh, temperature inversion. There's a pretty strong cap, pretty strong lid. I'm questioning just how much of these storms uh, could 
uh, fire up beforehand. But anything that does fire up beforehand certainly would have the stronger of the tornado threats with it. So that's something to keep in mind for tomorrow. Main event, though, will be a squall line that pushes through. And again, this looks from about, oh, say, 5, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening uh, all through uh, get being gone here by about, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night. So it's going to push through Indiana uh, very quickly here. And now let me take a look at this afternoon's run, too, just for another perspective. There's that rain developing tonight and pushing through. And by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, most of it well off to the north with the warm front. And then again, this uh, this uh, radar does start to pop some uh, discrete cells out here during the afternoon hours as well. We'll see again whether that happens or not. If it does, with the weather parameters that we have in place tomorrow, there could be a strong tornado and large hail risk associated with those individual cells. So those would be very troubling. But those I'm just very skeptical on. I'm not sure whether that'll happen tomorrow morning. Maybe we'll get a little bit better idea. At any rate, though, the same idea here. You can see that squall line uh, starting to form in about pretty much the same time you're looking here at about 6 o'clock Eastern time. Squall line right here along the Wabash River and then just very quickly moves through. Now that squall line... Uh, will be the one that will be the most dangerous. Uh, I'm very confident that we see a squall line form, but uh, those individual cells out in front are the ones that are very questionable right now. That squall line could have damaging winds, you know, up to 70 miles per hour, uh, you know, along with some hail to go along with it, and uh, possibly even some brief tornadoes uh, for any of those sections that can start to sort of bow out into the line. So something that we're going to have to watch. By the way, you see how powerful of a cold front this is. Look as that line goes through what's going up to the north. A nice uh, snowstorm going on up to the north where multiple inches of snow are going to go through there. And then watch poor Indianapolis here for you guys watching up towards there. You get in on the action too with a squall line. And so that squall line sort of comes through, uh, you know, 8 and 9 o'clock tomorrow night here for you. And then watch that as you get later into the overnight hours. Even Indianapolis could see some light snow shower activity by early Wednesday morning. So that tells you, you know, you go from a squall line with damaging winds, possibly a tornado threat. To, uh, you know, central Indiana onward getting a, 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 you know, a snow shower risk early on Wednesday at this. I don't think that'll come far south here in southern Indiana, but it just illustrates how strong uh, this system really is with that. All the parameters are there in place. I don't want to bore you with this, but again, here's that lid that I'm talking about. We're looking at uh, convective inhibition. That's that capping inversion that I was talking about. This is sort of the lid on the atmosphere, but watch as it sort of starts to erode away by about 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. And then as you go through the afternoon, it erodes away pretty good by the evening time. And again, and that's because the radar here, uh, you know, it brings a pretty good mess of clouds in here with it, with those storms. But notice as you go through the morning times, hours, those uh, those storms, those uh, remnants of that rain pushing off to the north with the warm front. And you've got, you know, uh, just sort of look what you've got going on back here. You've got some breaks in the clouds with some sunshine starting to come through with this. And as I, you know, and as I press on with it a little bit right in here, this is even a partly cloudy sky over southern Indiana. And that's very troubling. If that's happened, then that's going to add a lot of fuel for tomorrow night. So we got to watch that. I'm skeptical of how much uh, break we'll end up having in with this. But if we do, there's certainly a stronger uh, risk with uh, associated with that if we do get some hours of those heating. Uh, either way, you look at it, plenty of energy for these. You know, you basically need some strong winds and then you need some uh, instability with this and then a triggering mechanism. We got the triggering mechanism in the form of the potent crunk coming through. Here's a measure of instability in the atmosphere. And you know, this is uh, modest if we were in summertime, but this is, this is pretty high, uh, for early spring. And so that's certainly more than enough instability to do the job tomorrow. Wind energy, you need 35 units, uh, of, uh, wind somewhere in the layers of the atmosphere to be able to get organized severe weather. Absolutely no problem. We, we are more, uh, we are already more than that, close to 40 to 50, uh, knots worth of wind there. And it's even stronger as you get back towards the front. So, uh, both on instability and wind energy, we got plenty of it to work with tomorrow. And so if you really think concerning things to me, then, you know, if you look at the energy of the helicity index, the EHI, this is a measure of spin in the atmosphere. These are some strong numbers. And so that's indicating that we could be looking at some, uh, the potential for some rotating storms along uh, the squall line and especially anything that develops out ahead of it. The potential certainly there. If we look at the storm relative helicity, the SRH, again, it's another measure of spin in the atmosphere. And you see it's got some very strong numbers with this. So both of those, uh, those numbers and some other things uh, all go into uh, a parameter that we call a significant tornado parameter, STP. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's elevated. And so, you know, we're looking at, especially right along that front, but even out ahead of that front too. So again, the tornado threat not completely non-existent tomorrow. I think a damaging wind threat would be the primary threat, but 
Uh, as as these as this front moves through, you get some of those Boeing lines, uh, some Boeing segments out on that line. You can get some brief tornado spin ups on the lead uh, with that. So that's certainly a threat that uh, you know we, we can't ignore. And again, any cells that become discrete, in other words, they're out ahead of the line. They're sort of by themselves. They could become supercellular kind of storms very quickly and could uh, end up having that. And then just the last thing I'll end on, what we're looking up here is updraft helicity. So we're looking at the radar, uh, the future radar product here, measuring that spin in the atmosphere and where it might be. And would you just look here, this is over a three-hour period. So what you're doing is measuring spin in the atmosphere in these thunderstorms as they roll through over a three-hour period. And, and sort of would you just know that right here uh, over southern Indiana and western Kentucky as the line rolls through, uh, we do have that potential certainly there for it. So each of these lines that you see in here uh, represents the possibility for some rotating thunderstorms to go through. Now, don't take this as the exact placement here, but again, it just illustrates for us the idea of where the greatest area of concern is. So right now we're under an enhanced risk. I would not be surprised if we were up to a moderate risk tomorrow. Um, if, if we can get more confidence, if we see some sunshine tomorrow, I think that moderate risk is coming. If we don't see the sunshine, you're probably going to end up with the enhanced. But whether you go enhanced or moderate, it's going to be a strong risk any way you cut it. Uh, I'd almost guarantee we're going under a watch of some sort, and of some sort tomorrow night. I would suspect probably a tornado watch, uh, just given the parameters that are in place to be extra cautious. This line moves through. You're going to have multiple severe thunderstorm warnings up and down that line. I can just about guarantee it if it plays out the way things are looking at in modeling right now. And I would not be surprised if you end up having, again, as you see here, whenever you see data showing uh, the rotation tracks like this, well, you can just sort of get an idea that, uh, you know, you're probably going to have some tornado warnings come out of this as well. So what you need to do right now is, is have your severe weather plan in place. Uh, know exactly where you're going to go in the event that a tornado watch and a tornado warning are possibly issued um, and be able to take that shelter and have a way uh, to get your warnings to try to keep uh, Facebook and Twitter updated as much as I can. But you can't rely on social media for those warnings. I'll warn you to folks to the very best that I can on on. Uh, on my pages. However, you, you, you know, uh, have the, have a way to get those warnings on your smartphone, have a way to get, uh, uh, you know, a warnings by your email or a NOAA weather radio or whatever you're going to need it tomorrow, the way things look. So again, looks like it could be a very bad day around here tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be up bright and early and trying to give you an update on what's going to come on for the day. And then of course, again, the time line for this mainly is going to come during the afternoon hours, but look for another update early in the morning. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great night, folks. Talk to you soon.